Hi everyone, welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Edupedia World. The last couple of lectures we have been discussing about diffusion processes. Today we will see what are the different factors which affect the rate of diffusion. What are the factors which determine how fast the diffusion will be taking place. So broadly speaking, the factors are one, what is the diffusion species that we are talking about? in which material is diffusion taking place, the concerned diffusion, and which atom we are talking about in the diffusion process. In addition to that, also what is the mechanism of diffusion that is going to take place, whether it is going to be vacancy diffusion, whether it is going to be interstitial diffusion, what are the sizes of the atoms taking place, those factors. Then the second factor we will be studying about is temperature how the temperature is going to be affecting the diffusion process, we will see that in details. And finally, we will study about some alternative diffusion paths. In addition to the traditional path, that is the vacancy and the interstitial sites, there are some alternative paths which uh, help in diffusion processes too, we will study about that. So let's begin by discussing about the diffusing species and the mechanism factor. So, as we have seen that J depends on the diffusion coefficient, right? And this diffusion coefficient is itself dependent on what is the diffusing species present and what is the mechanism being followed for diffusion. Okay, for example, if the atom taking part is small in size, then it will be easier for that atom to diffuse, right? Smaller sized atoms can easily diffuse. So for small sized atoms, the diffusion coefficient will be large. Alternatively, for larger atoms, it will be small. Then again, if we have small sized atoms, which is taking part in interstitial diffusion, then D will be large. Whereas, if it is taking part in vacancy diffusion, if any atom is taking part in vacancy diffusion, then since the vacancies are limited, the diffusion coefficient will be small in magnitude. Hence, the diffusion will be slower in rate. Okay. To give you an idea of how does D depend on these factors, here we have taken the example of iron diffusing in iron at 500 degrees Celsius. When iron is self-diffusing in iron, the D factor, the diffusion coefficient factor is 3 into 10 to the power minus 21 meter square per second. Whereas, if we consider carbon diffusing in a iron bulk, carbon in alpha iron, then the D factor, the diffusion coefficient increases to 1.8 into 10 to the power 15. Here it was 10 to the power minus 21. Here it is 10 to the power minus 15. So uh, increase by 1 million times only by switching the species and the mechanism. Here it was self diffusion, pretty slow. Here it is interstitial diffusion, much more rapid than self diffusion. So this example kind of highlights what I'm trying to prove. What I am trying to state that the diffusion species and the diffusing mechanism are quite fundamental to the rate of diffusion. Fine. This example also gives you insight about vacancy and interstitial diffusion mechanism, obviously. Okay. With this, let's see what is the effect, the influence of the second factor, which is the temperature. Temperature is the most important factor while defining the rate of diffusion because diffusing mechanism is not under our control. If we have a material in which diffusion needs to take place, the species and mechanism is fixed, right? You cannot alter the material just to meet your uh, process requirements. But what you can alter is the temperature under which the process, diffusing process will take place. So this is something which we as a user can control. Therefore, temperature is in fact one of the most important property which will define the usefulness of diffusion and which will affect the rate of diffusion. How does temperature affect diffusion? 
what temperature does is basically it affects the diffusion coefficient directly and the relation by which it affects the diffusion coefficient is d is d naught times exponential minus qd by rt where qd is activation energy for diffusion it is fixed for a particular specimen for a particular process so this does not change r is universal gas constant so that remains constant but t can be changed right and larger the t this in being in denominator this will become smaller with a negative sign this whole thing will become large so as t increases d will also increase diffusion coefficient will increase and the increase is exponential it's not linear it's not Square, not quadratic it is exponential increase and we know that exponential increase is a very very fast rate of increase very small change in temperature will increase the value of t drastically since the dependency is exponential okay and this is exactly what we'll be using to our advantage will be tailoring the temperature such that our diffusion rate is high or as per our requirement without affecting other relevant properties okay now that we have an idea about the most important factor which will be affecting the diffusion process and which is under our influence let's see some alternative paths of diffusion some alternative paths of diffusion are basically the paths which are the defects in the material we have seen the different kind of defects that those are dislocations or the grain boundary or the external surface those places are regions of high energy they already have high energy they want to lower their energy therefore those are regions or paths which are very effective for any atom to come and move about right these regions of imperfection therefore provide path for easy diffusion what are those things this can be dislocation as i said grain boundaries external surface these provide much easier path for atomic diffusion but the catch is that the effective amount of these type of paths is much much less than the bulk material right therefore the total effect of this alternative paths is quite small compared to the bulk diffusion which takes place either by vacancy mechanism or by interstitial mechanism therefore though these alternative paths are much faster their effective contribution is so small that bulk diffusion is the real mechanism which determines how fast the effective diffusion is going to take place to sum up the idea that uh, we have several factors which affect diffusion one is the species which we are talking about and the mechanism which it will take in order to carry out diffusion but we do not have much control over that then we have alternative paths like dislocation grain boundaries external surfaces but their contribution is much less than the bulk diffusion and the most importantly the temperature factor which is actually under our control and which has exponential effect on the rate of diffusion so i hope the last three lectures have given you a glimpse into the diffusion process taking place in solid materials and this knowledge will help you understand the fundamentals of material science much better the different processing mechanisms the different uh, metal working processes which uh, takes place in metallurgy that has a lot to do with diffusion the different heat treatments that has a lot to do with diffusion so with this i will close today's lecture next lecture we will be starting a new topic altogether we will be learning about different tests and different examinations which we can take mechanical tests we can take for a material to see its different properties so till next class have a great day goodbye